Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and today we're going to be reviewing the Neva 3D printer, a really unique Delta style printer. Before starting the review, I want to give a huge thank you over to Dagoma for being awesome and allowing me to review this unit, especially with it not even being available for retail purchase yet. If you do enjoy this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe for more 3D printing goodness. Now, upon arrival of this 3D printer, I didn't really know what to expect from the Neva. For starters, I really have limited experience with Delta style 3D printers and the experience I do have with them really hasn't been the best. Uh, the Neva is a pre-built, pre-assembled 3D printer, which will really save you a lot of time and you won't have to try to put together a big box full of parts, which is extremely nice. With it being pre-built, setup was a complete breeze and it took me no more than five or 10 minutes from opening the box until the unit was ready to print. The process was really as simple as connecting a few magnetic arms, hitting the auto calibration button and watching the machine perform its magic. If you do get this printer, um, I do want to make a note that make sure you remove any 3D printed surface or parts that might come on the unit. Um, sometimes it seems like maybe they do that for testing. I've seen 3D printers do that before. I didn't notice that there was a thin 3D printed circle and the company's logo on the bed. I actually thought it was part of the bed's design. Uh, it didn't cause an issue, it didn't seem like, at least with my auto calibration, but you really should clear the bed before running that initial setup. The Neva is very well designed and built, and if needed to move around, you really don't have to be concerned with breaking it. Um, Neva actually posted a little video of someone standing on the frame. Really, I do not recommend you do this. It will be hard to explain the warranty <laughs> if you bend the frame. Uh, you will not be getting confused with the operation on the machine because there's only one singular button on the machine which is used to start and pause a print. Aside from the auto bed leveling, the machine does have a couple of other really neat features. The machine has a filament runout sensor uh, which when triggered will cause the print to pause and this will allow you to swap in a new filament and not ruin your print which is a very nice feature. Also, they made it easy to do multicolored prints by swapping filaments mid-print. Uh, I did try this on a live stream and it went very well. All you do is hit the pause button whenever you'd like during a print and double tap the bed, which will cause the filament to unwind completely. Uh, after that, you insert your new filament, press the button again, and it will pick up right where it left off, but with the newly inserted color. This does allow for some really cool looking uh, multicolored prints, which I haven't really dabbled with too much before, so it was definitely fun to try out. As far as the print quality goes, um, I did get a few different prints done on this machine. I didn't go smaller than 0.2 resolution because I really don't ever print finer than that, uh, but you can go down to 0.1 resolution. Uh, overall, I was really impressed with the quality of the print considering it came out of the box and printed. I really had no complaints. The bed's build surface is covered in something called build grip, which is, I believe, similar to like build tech. Uh, this does work fairly well at holding your prints down, and I do recommend, though, that every couple of prints, maybe give it a good wipe down with some rubbing alcohol just to clear off any maybe dust that's built up or residue from the prints uh, prior to it. On the software side, I was told that you would be able to use this machine with any slicer, like one that you normally use, uh, but I did have issues trying to get it to work with Repetier. I was unable to get a response on the correct baud rate from the company, so that is something I think needs to be addressed and released with the final retail shipments. The slicer that I was forced to use was one created by Dagoma that was a much slimmed down Cura slicer. It did work, and it was able to output a .g file, which is what was required to use on the SD card um, that I inserted into the printer to print, but the software was definitely lacking in features. I do understand that they want to keep it simple and that it is also in beta, but they do need to either show how to use it with your normal slicer and or incorporate more options into their slicer that they had created. I personally like to print at a 0.3 layer height for large prints, and with the software they had, 0.2 was the largest layer that I could actually choose from. This machine is a PLA machine, meaning exactly that. It does not have a heated bed, which the company says is part of their vision for creating a machine that is eco-friendly. For me, this is not a problem at all since I really only print in PLA, but I do know that for some, this is a deal breaker. This machine does have one fan that is blowing on the hot end, and it does not have a dedicated first layer fan, which is a little strange considering it is a PLA machine. It does seem though that the design that they created for the assembly does allow for some of the fans kind of over spray or the fans wind to actually go onto the first layer. However, I did encounter a bit of stringing on some of my prints, which I do think could be solved with better first layer cooling. 
uh, or at least the ability to edit retraction settings through the slicer, which again is something that could happen if they do release the baud rate or the details that you need to connect it with your you know, slicer that you're using right now. Uh, to wrap this up and sort of recap on the Neva from Nagoma, I do think that it is a really great, neat machine. Um, some of the positives are a fairly decent build area at 7 inches diameter by 8 inches tall. It, it prints well at roughly 80 millimeters a second, which is not a speed demon, but it's not too slow either. There is no setup other than auto calibration, and the maintenance is just to wipe down now and then. This printer can easily be used by someone with no 3D experience uh, whatsoever, but it, if they do allow it to be used with your slicer, it could easily be enjoyed by a professional. It also has some pretty great features built in, and at roughly 400 US dollars for a pre-built Delta, the price is definitely fair. On the other side of the spectrum, if you need to print in other filaments besides PLA, this machine will not be for you. Also, this machine does not have an LCD screen, which I do know some of you really like to have. Lastly, as mentioned, the machine's Cura Beta software definitely needs some added features that it is currently lacking in. This is just about going to wrap up the review of the Tagoma Neva Delta 3D printer. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. If you do have any further questions or comments for me, you can let me know in the comments down below, and I will try my best to answer them. And if I can't answer them, hopefully I can get some of the guys over from Tagoma to answer your questions for you. Um, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace guys.